Hi, Steve here. Welcome to this uh, tutorial on Greyhound Price Monitor. If you've been a user of our uh, of our horse racehorse price monitor, then this is very similar, except it doesn't have the steamer and drifter option. Okay, so the first thing when you open the screen, obviously, you would need to go to your settings, and in the settings here we have the four countries with the Greyhound. So you deselect any country that you're not interested in. We leave all four selected. It gives you the time zone of the races. So I am plus eight Greenwich Mean Time. So it's in my time. And then we have the first option we have is latest odds option. Now it can record the pricing right up until they jump. But the problem is you've, you've got to put your bet on. So I suggest 10 seconds before the off is, is, is a good time to, to uh, catch all the final movements. I mean, if you're a little bit slow on the trigger finger, then you can obviously drift it out a little bit. You can use up to the actual start, but the, the thing with this is, if you're looking at past results, um, it's not an accurate guide as to whether you would be able to put your bet on or not. So use seconds before the start. Now, T1 is the first um, time frame that you want to capture. Now, you can have an exact time, like you might want to start looking at the races it's say at 12 o'clock if you're doing uh, some Australian racing but I prefer to use minutes before the race and because Greyhounds markets form so late um, we're in the horses we can use 120 minutes and 60 minutes I've found testing it in that that the best returns and the most accurate is to keep it tight and I, I'm using from the my very first time recording is six minutes before the, the official start T2 is at five four three two one and then uh, and then of course ten seconds before it will stop recording the prices for me so that's in one minute increments and I find that I get enough accurate information using it there but if you want to start looking at the race is 15 minutes out then you put in 15 minutes if you're doing research on the past results you can change these times and the time and the price movement reflected will reflect the times that you put in so that's what I run with and that's what I'll show you how I do once I've done that we have the submit button, uh, submit button down the bottom here so we just submit that and what it does it makes it tells us that it's made the changes and we are good to go so if we once we've done that we have uh, our countries there Great Britain obviously hasn't started yet and then we can come down into New Zealand New Zealand's um, nearly finished racing for the day two meetings at Manawa 2 and Addington and then we've got the Australian meetings here Okay, also uh, before I get into a little bit more, another thing you'll find up here is if you go along here, it has the race, uh, the race number, the race uh, distance, and the grade. This is a grade five. And as you can see here, because I have mine set at 10 seconds before the off, the last recording of odds there is 11 seconds before the official start time. 11.17 and the official start time is 11.18 so you can see there um, over around so the market is at 101% so pretty close to 100% market and the other important thing here is money matched it's always in pounds doesn't matter if it's in New Zealand Australia Ireland it's always in pounds we can see in this race here at Warrnambool race 11 it was 9,249 pounds and there was eight runners from eight, so there was no scratchings or anything. So that's why we now see um, in the Australian racing, you'll see two blue P's if there's eight dogs starting, so they'll play first, second, and third on eight dogs. And uh, if there's less than eight, then there will be uh, two places down to four starters, then there'll only be a win price. So. That is uh, the times up there. If we go down the bottom, we can see there. This is my settings. You can see that I've just talked about my first, my T1 time, which is this time here. The first one is set at six minutes, right down there. 
Okay, so how do we make some sense of these figures? Before we do that, um, I'll just explain. Okay, so how do we how do we use the tool? Well, it is a tool, and it's up to you how you use it. Different time frames will give you different readings. We have a very important option here, which is the market movement and the price movement. Now, if I look at the market movement, for example, and we just look at this race here, number three, just gab. Six minutes out, it was at three dollars eighty. Now, with ten seconds to go, it's at two dollars eighty-two. That is a nine percent shift in the market share that this dog has. Okay, so it's a quite a big movement. It's only it's coming a, um, a nearly a, a full dollar from 3.8 to 2.882 in the six minutes. If I change this price movement, uh, market movement to price movement, you can see there it's a 25% movement from 3.8 to 2.12. But we find that a price movement is not as accurate guide as market movement. If it's moving in the market, it's a far better indicator. So we can see here that this dog has moved nearly 10% in the market. So it's a big mover. And I find in my research, doing it from the six minute mark to the off, anything that's 5% market price or more is usually a good bet. If it's 10 or more, it's a very good bet. So we can see here that just gap one because it's got the green W and we can see there this these are the markers that indicate so the first marker there is the T1 price to now so we can see that's green meaning the price has moved in a positive direction it's shortening the, the second price at five minutes at four minutes at three minutes all those prices were higher than the current price and the two reds mean the price was lower. So if we go out to T5, we can see it was at 2.74 and it was at 2.78 with a minute to go. This, this is the one minute and two minute price. Okay, so in the horses, we used to look at all greens, but we were looking over a longer time factor. Now with the shorter time factor, the T, T1 time to the current is a better indicator. Because with the dogs, we're looking at a short time frame and there are fluctu fluctuating prices. You can see in the dogs here, in this race, um, the favourite six minutes out was at 2.32. Just Gab was second favourite at 3.8. And our Brinny was 5.2, third favourite. So there's not a lot of difference between the first two. So the price is going to jump around and we're going to get our red and green bars. So... As far as the bars go, if they're all green, great. But this figure here, the movement from the T1 time to the current time is a more is a better indicator. Now, I just want to show you something else here on the on the price here on the market. Nine nine thousand pounds is invested in race eleven. If I go to race twelve at Warrnambool. You can see something interesting here. We have the third favourite at the six minute mark called Floppy Roo has moved 9.47% in price in five or six minutes. So it's a big move. It's nearly our 10% and it's all green. So it's been coming in all the time. The second favourite um, remains its second favourite and it's come in also. But look at the prior, at the money invested in the race. There's twenty-four thousand pounds. So there's fifteen thousand in race twelve than there was in race eleven, and it had a very strong two two dogs at the top of the market, indicating that there was some money in that race that indicated they knew more about the dogs than the average Joe. So that was a very strong indicator. It didn't get it to 10%, but certainly was over our 5%. All green, and it's come in um, nearly a full dollar. So Floppy Roo would have been a very good bet on the uh, price movements in the last six minutes. But another big 
indicator of the winner I've noticed in the time I've been testing this is the top two. If the top two produces a lot of winners and you'll see there from the six minute mark, the T1 mark, to the current price mark, um, how dogs that are down third and fourth on this T1 mark end up being first and second and end up winning. It's a very high percentage. Also keep an eye out for like the Bundaberg race here, race one, we can see there's only 2,300 pounds infested in this race. Okay, and it sort of throws up. We've got a odds on favorite there, moved in 4.56, uh, ran second. But with the low amount of money in there, I'm finding with the lower pool, it's not as good an indicator as the markets that have a lot more money in them. So keep that in mind. Also, what you have here is we can go back and look at yesterday's races. So we can um, go back here and we can see here's the Irish racing from yesterday. To We can look at some of the night meetings here at Central Park. Uh, 23,000 pounds. So we're getting up there. A top two winner, Swindon. Um, nothing outstanding there. Uh, 23,000 pounds. Um, small firmer there. At Henlow, um, twenty-two thousand pound. So we can see there a um, few dogs moving in there, but a top two winner at twenty-seven thousand pound. So that top two do win a lot of races. So you may want to look at our deluxe um, Dutching, which is ideal to if you run run those two. So where are we here? Swindon. Uh, the third dog won £33,000. Ah, the outsider won there from 25s out to 42. £72,000 there at Central Park. Henlow, another top two winner. Uh, a big mover there but didn't win. And that's £37,000. Swindon. Um, 5% mover and a 6% mover there. 5% mover jockey girl um, got the cash, but a top two winner for us again. Central Park, uh, 49,000 in the pool. Uh, over 5% winner for us. 1.79 bit short, so I don't like taking the short ones. And uh, Henlow, what have we got here? Another top two winner. Um, no big market movers there. Swindon, the top two winner, but uh, no big market movers there again. Central Park, uh, no big movers. Uh, well down in the market there. I mean, the rough ones still come in, we can't help that. A really rough one down there, 32, but no big market movers. As you can see, nothing moved. So the market must have been a little bit over before at the six minute mark, only 22,000 in that pool. In low, top two winner there. Central Park, uh, another rough one. Ronnie Tread, 11s out to 16s. No major firmers here. We can see that nothing moved in the last six minutes, nothing moved within two and a half points either way. That's a good reflection. If we just go back to Central Park, that's a good reflection there on that there's no real direction. There's um, no pushing for any major, you know, dog, and um, and even the outsiders haven't drifted that much. So there's no internal knowledge. Everyone thinks everyone's got a fairly good chance in that race. You won't get bets in every race, so keep that in mind. Here we've got an over five, but no good for us. Seventeen thousand in the pool. Getting near the end of the night. Henlow, another top two winner, but very short, but 12, 13 points. 13% uh, firmed in price from 6 minutes at 2.4 out to 1.83. And the last one at Central Park, uh, another outsider, Prince of Troy. But another race where nothing moved much at all. 44,000 spent and they didn't really have uh, a favourite. Even the um, the 16 to 1 dog that won it only moved uh, minus one, half of 1%. Okay, so thanks for watching this tutorial. It is a tool, remember, but there's many ways of using it. And I look forward to hearing how you went with yours. 
Um, we've got the user guide there, which will bring you back to this video. You can hide ticks or show ticks. If we uh, hide, there's the ticks of these little numbers here. That tells you how much, how many ticks it's moved in on the Betfair, or you can hide them. It's up to you. Okay, thanks for watching this. On behalf of Michael and myself, Steve, we wish you all the best with Greyhound Price Monitor. If you haven't got the horse one, uh, have a look at the link below this video, and you may want to get involved in the horse one as well. It does more countries, obviously, South Africa as well. So we wish you all the best. Thank you.